In this video, we're going to take a look at um, the if function in Excel. The if function is used whenever you want to decide among one of two things to put into a cell. Uh, sometimes uh, what goes in a cell may vary depending on some other condition someplace else on the spreadsheet. And so sometimes you may want to put one value in, and other times you may want to put a different value in. And when that's the case, the function you need to use is the if function. So what I've got here is a um, simple spreadsheet. I've got uh, three students. Uh, each one of them has a score for the semester. And um, up here is the value that's required to pass. And uh, what I want to do is I want Excel in these three cells here. I want Excel to look at this number, compare it to this number. And if this number is greater than or equal to this number, I want the letter P in there. And if it's not, I want the letter F, P for pass and F for fail. So, um, looks like uh, we should get a P for George, we should get a P for John, but we should get an F here for Thomas. Uh, let's go uh, put some formulas in. Um, we're going to be using a function. If you want to use a function, uh, you can get to all of the functions from the formulas tab here. So let's click on the formulas tab. And there's going to be a book for uh, each category of function. And um, the if is considered a logical function. Uh, logical functions have to do with making decisions. And uh, there's a short list of them. And we want the if. So let's go ahead and click on it. And when you do that, you get uh, the function arguments dialog box, which uh, at least when you're first learning Excel, uh, is the easiest way to do a function. Uh, it comes up with a list of the arguments to the function, a little description of what the function does, and um, the function arguments over here on the left are, are all labeled. Um, sometimes they're bold, sometimes they're not. If they are bold, it means that that is a required argument. Uh, if they're not, it means that uh, they're optional. However, with the if function, you're almost always going to use all three of these. So technically, these, you know, these will give you a default value uh, if you don't put anything in. But uh, in real life, you're almost always going to put something there. So it wants to know what our logical test is. Okay, so let's drag this over to the side here a little bit. Well, our logical test is I want to compare this number, and I want to see if it's greater than or equal to this number over here. Now, notice it evaluates over here on the right side. It tells me that the result of that expression is true because 80 is greater than or equal to 70. Now, I'm going to want to copy this formula. I don't want to type it in three times. And if I had 100 students here, I certainly wouldn't want to type it in 100 times. And when I copy it down to the next row here, I'm going to want the B2 to change to a B3. So I can look at uh, John's score. But the E2 is going to remain the same. This number up here is never moving. So that's going to be an absolute cell reference. And if it's an absolute cell reference, I need to put dollar signs in. So I'm going to put some dollar signs in there. And the quick way to add dollar signs to a cell reference is to just click, uh, press function key number 4, F4, on your keyboard. So I want to know if B2 is greater than or equal to E2. And if it is, the student passed. So I want to put the letter P in there. So just type a capital P. And then we're going to tab down to the next box. And watch what happens when we do. Quotation marks appear around the letter P. And that's important. Those are required. And if the value is false, I want the letter F to appear there, as in failed. And when I tab out of here, I also get the quotation marks put in. And down at the bottom left here, it tells you that the result of the formula for these particular values in this cell is going to be P because George did pass. And if we click on OK here, uh, we get the letter P. And if I double click on it, it shows me that there's a blue value over here and a red value over here. And if I click and drag and copy this down with the fill handle, and let's double click on uh, John here, and the B3. The score reference moved down, but the 70 stayed here. If I double click on this one, again, the score reference moved down, but the 70 stayed here. So uh, that's the correct way to do that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, delete all of these, and we're going to go back and we try it a different way. Uh, let's go to C2 here, and I'm going to type it in instead of using the um, function arguments dialog box. And once you've used a function a few times, you can usually 
uh, just type it in and it'll probably go a little bit faster. I know the name of the function is if, so type if, and functions always have an argument list in parentheses, so I start with the left parenthesis. And then it wants to know what the logical test is. And it comes up with this little um, list here that helps you remember what the arguments are if you can't remember. And the first one is a logical test. And the logical test is going to be, uh, is b2 greater than or equal to e2 and then press function key f4 again to put the dollar signs in and if it is put the letter p in there and this time I have to type the quotation marks myself and if it's not the value of false here is going to be the letter f close the argument list with a parenthesis hit the enter key and it tells me that George passed the class I'm gonna get my fill handle and copy that down and I get the same results I did before uh, it's exactly the same um, the formulas in here exactly the same. I just created the formula differently by typing it in myself. Now there's one thing I want to take a look at before we end this video and that is if I go up here and what if I forget to type in the quotation marks? Now when you use the function arguments dialog box it uh, puts quotation marks in for you but if you type it in yourself it does not. You have to remember to put them in. So I'm going to delete those quotation marks and we'll see what happens. And what happens is I get this error and um, Excel indicates that there's a problem um, by putting an error message in big capital letters. Um, it starts with a pound sign, ends with a question mark. And what it's asking me is it doesn't, it doesn't know what this is. Um, if you see the word name there, it means that there's a name that it does not recognize. Okay? Uh, it recognizes if because that's a built-in function. Um, and um, anything in quotation marks is just supposed to be the actual text that's in there. But if it's, if it's a letter or a word and it's not enclosed in quotation marks, then Excel basically thinks this is another function, but it can't find a function on its list of functions called plain old P. And um, so you have to make sure to put quotation marks around it. So let's put, and I messed that up, let's try that again. Um, put quotation marks on both sides of the P and now it doesn't think that that's the name of something. Now it knows that it's just supposed to put the letter P in that cell. So that's the if function. Um, three parts to it. And by the way, if you want to go back and edit uh, after you've created the function, uh, there's two ways to do it. You can just go up here and click. Actually, there's three, I guess. You can double click down here and edit right in the cell. Or you can click on this little FX here to the left of the formula bar, and that will bring up the function arguments list. So that's the way the if function works. Anytime you want to make a decision about what to put in a cell, um, use the if function. It, it requires a logical test, the value you want to go in if true, and the value you want to go in if false. And we'll look at something called nested if functions in another video. That's if you have to decide from among more than just two values to put in if you need to decide among three or four or more.